one point, the mother of this eight-month-old child put the baby in a chokehold. This is the second alleged incident of child abuse in about two weeks here in Gloversville. Child abuse. A nearly 18-month-old boy died at 4 a.m. Neglectful parenting. Police tell us a dead newborn baby was found in a dumpster. There's a problem here. Why aren't we helping? And why does it happen? It doesn't make sense to any rational adult, but that's not necessarily who's taking care of these children. How can we stop it? Families can reach out to us and say, I'm at my breaking point. I need some support. How do we avoid that crucial breaking point? It was a difficult end to the month of November here in upstate New York. Over a nine day period from the capital region to the southern tier, Time Warner Cable News covered five cases of serious alleged child abuse. Six parents or caretakers were arrested two children seriously assaulted, and three children died. Each case makes each of us feel sick, and we wonder, what can we do to stop it? Or can we even stop it? First, we have to understand exactly what child abuse is. Under federal law, child abuse, also called maltreatment, is defined as an act or failure to act on the part of a parent or caretaker, which results in death, serious harm, sexual abuse, or exploitation of children. The law also applies guilt to anyone who creates a risk of harm to children. In the most recent data available, upstate New York logged 25,000 confirmed cases of child abuse or neglect in 2013. 111 upstate children died due to abuse. Nationwide, only about two of every 100,000 children die of abuse each year, but most agree that number is still too high. In Warren County, we had two uh, fatalities of children uh, within the same calendar year. Warren County's DA, Kate Hogan, deals with these cases personally. You just shake your head and think, how could anyone take be violent towards the most vulnerable, most innocent. And yet, if the child does not die, almost no one notices abuse. When there is an animal abuse case, many DAs get inundated with emails and letters. And yet, when there is a child abuse case, there's, I don't get the same sense of urgency in emails or letters. Even in the news, we do not talk enough about child abuse and neglect, but now we will. Tomorrow, we take a closer look at one of the capital region's most high-profile child abuse killings and why some parents suddenly snap. That's tomorrow on part two of Breaking Point. Though it may be hard to tell, this is a family incomplete. He was happy. He was always smiling. He was actually a really good baby. Lisa Younes gave birth to Jesse James Smith on Halloween 2010. But these days, Lisa finds it hard to talk about Jesse ever since the incident. It just happened out of the blue. Lisa's sister, Trisha, often speaks instead. February 13th was the day that we got the phone call. On that day in 2012, 15-month-old Jesse Smith was with his father, Gary Waite. On that day, Jesse suffered a crushing blow to the head. Lisa knew none of this when she was called to Glens Falls Hospital. By the time she arrived, her baby boy was already on his way to Albany Med. And Lisa's estranged partner, Gary Waite, was in police custody. We really thought we were going to just walk into the hospital and be able to see him. And that wasn't the case. He was in surgery, um, getting brain surgery when we got there. There is an event that causes rage, and that rage causes catastrophic injury. Warren County District Attorney Kate Hogan sees violent abuse cases like Jesse Smith's too often. Hogan says oftentimes the parents and caretakers committing the abuse are young and suffer drug addiction, alcoholism, or untreated mental illness. So whether it is you weren't raised in a household where you had a proper role model, um, all of those factors are things that we see in cases like this. Another major factor, poverty. In 2013, nearly a quarter of American children investigated for abuse lived with financial problems. More than half of their caretakers were on public assistance. 
If I couldn't feed my kid tomorrow, damn right I'd hit the breaking point. Colleen Kelly Lyon is president of Hands Across New York, a group fighting child abuse by helping at-risk parents. Lori Russell is the founder. When I see these children, unfortunately we've been to their funerals and seen them in caskets. That's something I should never have to see. Both women say parents in poverty need more help, and everyday child abuse needs attention and action. It'll end when they get off the computer and do something. It's going to have to be step, step by step, step. Yeah. by Little step. things that can make changes. Ask anyone with children and they'll tell you, being a young parent is tough. When you're doing it on your own, it becomes even harder. And if you don't deal well with it, it can lead to a lot of the wrong places to the hospital, the police station, maybe, or in those rare but devastating cases, it can end up here. Jesse James Smith died from severe trauma in February 2012. More than a year and a half later, Gary Waite was convicted for murder. And Jesse Smith's family is left wishing that Gary or someone had reached out for help. You just have to make that phone call. Nobody's gonna help if you don't call. If you don't ask someone to help that child, no one's gonna. <laughs> Jaden Rodriguez just turned two years old. And he's loving life like a two year old should. Can I get you? Jaden's mom, Shashi, is loving life too. I never just like saw myself going to college and actually being a single mom doing it on my own with my own apartment. I'm just, I'm, that's really exciting. But just three months ago, life was not so great for Shashi and Jaden. I couldn't handle, uh, you know, just dealing with him daily, being with him, you know, your, your, your mind starts to eat at you. You realize, okay, I need help. I can't do this on my own. How can we feel safe enough to reach out and get the kind of help that's available. Dr. Mary McCarthy is director of the UAlbany School of Social Welfare, and she says too often, reaching out for help is confused with weakness. We have to not contaminate the service array that we have for families that are seeking help by making them worry, oh my gosh, you know, will people think I'm a terrible parent because I'm coming to these services? Dr. McCarthy says the first step to stopping child abuse and neglect is changing the way we react to those situations. It's easy to look at that story and be horrified and say, who could do that? And I would like to take a step back and ask myself, what happened in that family's life over the last 12 months that led to this kind of dissent? I believe that this work has to be done at a community level. Tim Hathaway, executive director for Prevent Child Abuse New York, says police, teachers and caretakers, right down to bankers and ministers and business owners, all of them need to reach out in their communities when they notice a difficult situation or possible neglect or abuse. Sometimes moving quickly to the let's report this, that, that is a right answer and I think another right answer is going that step beyond that to say how do we engage this kid, how do we engage this family in a way that communicates to them, somebody here really cares about you. In the most desperate situations, New York allows parents to offer newborns for adoption. The federal safe haven law even enables anonymous baby drop-offs at police and fire stations. Despina Drugis is an advocate. A woman could leave her newborn up to 30 days old at any of the designated locations. She can call 911 and they will take the baby with no questions asked. And for young parents who do want to keep their children, local governments have begun putting programs in place to help, like the Healthy Parenting and Mentoring Program right here in Warren County. Sashi Rodriguez was the first member. She said to me, um, you know, I just need help. With help from her mentor, Shashi is learning to play with her son while still meeting her own goals. I'm now in GED classes and currently going and he's in daycare, which is an awesome, awesome achievement. And one that is not out of reach for any young parent. People need to understand that there are people in need. There are people who do need support, need help. And there are people out there who are willing to give it.